some perks indeed this could be a scoop they still have access to all of these goodies um of course fight is one uh is active for them right now for a second i thought it wasn't gonna let me select it i was like what what's happening <laughs> turns out i just had to let go of my finger from the mouse <laughs> Hello, good game. Welcome back, ghouls and goblins. I hope you're all having a magical day. Thank you so much for taking the time to support the channel. Make sure to like the video. It helps so much. Today, tailoring to the free-to-play individual. You heard that right. So zero mythics, zero rares. Uh, a full-out artisan deck with commons and uncommons only. Uh, to start your Dungeons & Dragons expansion off out uh, quite successfully, I think. We have some really cool cards uh, incorporated into an older deck that we've upgraded. And um, this is getting fairly competitive. So Mono White Second Spell is the name of the game today. We're going to break down the deck, talk about strategies, synergies, showcase all of those, and then wrap up with our final thoughts, giving you, the individual, a good idea uh, whether or not this deck is going to fit your personal play style. And uh, more importantly, your wildcard collection, um, which shouldn't be an issue in this video because these are commons and uncommons uh so take note on the new cards that are included within the build and when you're drafting when you're doing your seal well not so much your seals but when you're doing your drafting you can keep an eye out for them if you like the deck and be sure to pick those um and then you don't even have to be spending your commons and uncommons uh to get them but again a couple sealed pools and you should get them uh there as well so with that out of the way Make sure to subscribe because you could win a complete playset, right? Complete rare playset, 240 rares on me. I know I completed my playset already. And once we reach 35,000 subscribers, I'm going to be buying them for one of you as well. So with all of that out of the way, let's get into it. Free to play, second cast, 60 card, best of one, 1 1.4 average mana value with 10 non-creatures and 33 creatures. 17 land with a few MDFC to help that uh, curve out nicely. The whole deck is based around the second spell. We have Monk of the Open Hand as a new addition into the build. A 1-1 with Flurry of Blows. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Monk of the Open Hand. This is going to be really nice because it has very high synergy with things like the Clarion Spirit. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, put a plus one, plus one, uh, or create a one, one spirit creature token with flying, <laughs> sorry, um, which is nice, right? So the uh, ability to play multiple spells each turn is our biggest strength in the deck. We do have some removal here uh, within portable hole. This is a very good card for one mana, an artifact. When it enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent, and opponent controls with mana value two or less until the hole leaves the battlefield, right? So this takes care of, you know, the Soaring Thought Thief, Robber of the Rich. Um, you know, the, the list goes on and on. There are so many annoying things that Portable Hole can just snag up. Got him, right? So that is uh, another new card that I find to be very, very powerful. It's also only one mana, so you can be double casting very easily. The final new card in the deck will be the Dawnbringer Cleric. Oh, wow. 1-3, when it enters the battlefield, choose one. Either gain two life, destroy target enchantment, or exile target card from your graveyard, uh, or from a graveyard. So the destroy target enchantment is incredible. That is so, so, so good. It's a decent defender. It only costs two mana. You get, um, you know, a creature and one of three abilities which I think is great. So whether it's graveyard control, taking out a Croxa or a Wolf Strider or whatever, um, gaining life if you're in a race against someone, or just taking advantage of the creature and removal in one, um, that is amazing, right? So um, all of these can be double cast very easily. Our main objective is to play the banner on turn three. Uh, we really want the spirits on, um, you know, that turn two if we can and the banner on turn three with another card on top of it which will trigger the spirit so turn one if we can go selfless savior giving our spirit indestructible on turn two and on turn three right just protecting the spirit so one one indestructible when it gets sacrificed on another creature right we all know this it goes onto the spirit 
to protect it if need be. If not, it just remains in play. Turn three, banner goes out, and then it is our code spell cleric, right? This is gonna be very good as well. Um, of course, if you wanna risk it for the biscuit, you can monk of the open hand, right? You can uh, start out heavy and on turn two, you're double casting on that uh, as well. But I prefer the indestructible to dodge the removal. With that being said, you know, the rest of the deck just kind of falls into place. We have the code spell cleric. Whenever it's the uh, second spell to be cast for the turn, you get a plus one, plus one counter on another target creature. That's really cool. It can go on something like your usher, your battlefield raptor, really anywhere, uh, which is nice. We have the fairy guide mother. It's a two in one, which is nice in case we draw it. It basically guarantees we can double cast uh, for two mana, plus two, plus one flying. And then for one mana, it's a one, one with flying, which is really nice. Um, so that's great. And the usher can boast for two mana. It doesn't cast uh, or count as a cast. It's just an ability, but again, if you have excess mana, if it's later on in the game, that's fine. We also have more flying within Wing of the Cosmos, but again, I really think the Fairy Guide Mother is a little bit better, potentially, um, you know, running both of them, even though the Skyclave Cleric as a land or the Cleric, depending on what our needs happen to be, and then the lands, right? So that's the whole deck. Um, as far as what's changed, right? We've added the Portable Hole, we've added Monk of the Open Hand, and we've added Dawnbringer Cleric, three very very powerful um common and uncommon spells within mono white that i think we will see in other decks as well um that are really cool so look out for those while you're doing your drafting while you're doing your seals and then take note and you won't have to collect them and you know who doesn't have some common and uncommon wild cards i know if you just started you might not have them but uh it doesn't take long to collect them and there's not too many new ones in the set if you've been playing the previous sets as well you have the majority of this deck already so i hope you guys enjoyed next up is the gameplay footage and then we'll come full circle with our final thoughts and deck review and maybe even talk about a couple upgrades that we think would go in the deck quite nicely so again thanks for your time and attention enjoy like the video and we'll be back in just a couple seconds all right our opponent's playing first keeping seven did someone say a new free-to-play deck what how good is this card? You could build a free-to-play deck around this card every day. Two mana, one three, enters the battlefield. Three different effects. Oh my gosh. I like to probably just play the savior? Hmm. Nah, let's get the Isher out. Maybe they attack with their dog because they want to force the trade somehow, and then we can snag in. Uh-oh! Okay, it wasn't a stomp. It was not a stomp. Good news. They still hit for one because now they have a defender. No blocks. I'll allow it. Cool, cool, cool. I really want to grab the third land for that banner. That would be amazing. Dog in play. Cleric in as the second spell. And that's going to go on the Usher. Woof, woof, baby. And we can attack for three. Sack the dog as needed. Selfless Savior, of course, can sack itself as instant speed to give another creature of ours indestructible. We get the three damage. They're not into it, right? But we still have the Code Spell Cleric to defend if we need, which is cool. Keep in mind, they have their own copy of Selfless Savior as well. Oh, Skyclave takes Usher. Or does it take Selfless Savior? Both of those are good options. It, uh... Takes it, and I'm actually going to sacrifice this now to give the Cleric Indestructible. We don't get a creature back. It only would have been a 1-1, one, one. and now they can't attack this turn, right? So they're tapped. The only, right, it's a trade-off. We get to defend this turn, have them not attack, uh, which is nice. Or we can potentially, maybe later, get a 1-1 one, one out of it when we remove the apparition i'm not entirely sure 
if that's all worth it. What we are looking for is a, uh, a white spell here, and they just choose to sacrifice their own selfless savior, or not. I'll allow it. And um, so this is cool. Banner comes in play. We select white. Our whole deck is uh, mono white, so it's our only option ever. And then we play the code spell cleric. Again, it's our second spell. And uh, as you know where it's going. We now have a 5-3. Which is quite nice. And they would have to double block. Do you think they will? I don't mind trading uh, an Usher for a Selfless Savior and a Skyclave Apparition. They might just take it down to... Ooh, 12. Wow. That's a chunk of damage. Really, really nice stuff. And at this point, I'd be happy to pick up some flying. Um, ooh, I'm worried they're playing Winota. <laughs> In the play queue? Really? Right? Uh, no blocks. Whatever, man. Right? Whatever, man. And, uh... We have four available mana. They don't have an enchantment. We don't really need to exile from their grave. So at this point, I think we probably just gain life. We'll play the Dogs of War first. Right, just so we can snag that indestructible if we need it. And um, we're all in. Of course, keeping the two mana for the boast here, potentially. Let's see what the blocks uh, come as. We're swinging for nine. Uh, no trample. And, uh, yeah, that is fine by me. Boast over. We get ourselves an additional 2-1. Really good stuff, especially with the banner, right? Um, a 2-1, so much better than a 1-1. One, one. <laughs> And um, just trying to top deck non lats, right? Ooh, showdown is good, but it doesn't actually do a lot for them this turn. In the upcoming turns, though, it is dangerous. However, I'll remind you, it's an enchantment, right? And that's why we saved the Dawnbringer Cleric. Because it's going to lay down some hurt. Some hurt, indeed. This could be a scoop. They still have access to all of these goodies. Um, of course, Fight is One uh, is active for them right now. For a second, I thought it wasn't going to let me select it. I was like, what? What's happening? <laughs> Turns out I just had to let go of my finger from the mouse. <laughs> and again, we're keeping that mana up to boast if we so choose. Um, they have on a human and non-human. Thankfully, they're all non-humans. Um, plus one and plus one indestructible. But I'd love to pull it from their hand now. Whoops. Did it automatically keep my dogs back? I'm I'm losing it. My, my head is turning to soup. <laughs> I will not protect that. I'll just let that trade go through. Um, I will protect the cleric. I'll protect both of the clerics. Oh, we could have just had... Did we just miss lethal? Did we just miss lethal? Um, we would have hit for six, potentially. So not quite. We definitely should have attacked with the dogs. I'm such a ding -a -ling sometimes. <laughs> just as you guys watch, realize that you can be uh, a great player as well. You know, if somehow I pass as a good player, um, you're doing just fine. Okay, so they're going to push up that Skyclave uh, to trade with the Usher. Yeah, we ain't having it. So it all, it all works out in the long run. Um, that we didn't attack with the dogs. Right, you just you kind of make up these weird narratives in your head uh, before you even kind of understand fully what's going on. So we're in the clear here. They do take the Human Warrior. Uh, the Apparition already has Indestructible. So 
I'm fine with that. It would have died anyways, uh, I believe, right? And we can just post over with our mana. The two one that died is basically just replaced for free. They have a Skyclave Apparition here, which is dangerous, taking out our Usher. So we do lose that. And they're left with two two twos. And if we kill the one Skyclave, we get a 1-1 one, one blue token, which is still pretty decent. Um, oh, that's great, though, right? You just love to see it, kids. We're going to push up our creature. Give it a little bit of flying, right? Flying is so hot right now. And we're going to swing in for a very merry good game. He misplays on each side, but that's how it goes. My arena assistant is kind of bugged out, so we don't get to see what rank they are, sadly. But uh, that's the new deck. Um, we're going to play, obviously, a couple more matches with it. Our opponent plays first. We have nothing good in hand other than our Cleric Raptor. Hopefully it's not rogues. Who would dare... Oh, it's mono white looks. That's delicious as well, isn't it? Uh, first strike. Get him, right? Um, now the speaker can't attack unless they play Luminarch Aspirant, which of course they do. Oh, they always do. Rank Q, play Q, doesn't matter. Uh, well, that's like a four man's Luminarch Aspirant, I guess. It's actually not bad. Pretty good. We're not defending it, that's for sure. So, you I mean, end of the day, same goal achieved. Defend at least, uh, or no defenders, I guess. At least we can attack and kind of take some of that back from them. Uh, that could be annoying as well. <laughs> that is not annoying. LOL. Oh my gosh. They are going to freak out when I do this. Portable hole. Taken out at exact mana value, one mana for one mana, uh, one of their best cards, right? Very good. Code spell cleric pushing up the battlefield raptor, and let's go tit for tat. Obviously, we're not defending a two three, so let's just uh, allow it through, right? And that's even if they don't second cast on top for a one CMC here as they play the land, which I imagine they have. So just uh, let them take their swing. And I imagine they take all they can here, right? And then we know they had it, and we made the right choice by not blocking. Or did we? That's a 5-5. Five five. <laughs> That's a heavy hitter. We have the land. Unfortunately, they do not have an enchantment in play. The life gain might be most relevant here. Let's get Usher out. The dogs would allow us to defend with the Vigilance creature, or even themselves. Uh, I think that's all right. Okay, for three. Yeah, they gained so much life. Right, gaining two life here, and then they hit us for two. They gained four life. Pretty annoying. And that's ultra disgusting as well. Portable hole dominates this deck that they're playing though right in a big way um no attacks really cool stuff one land shy hmm <laughs> really tough decision they have such a life advantage on us that it's going to be hard to make it through this. If we draw a land next turn, I'm gonna hate not playing this. And there's no way this does enough damage. They've got a spell in hand for sure. Let's just play the spirit and then, you know, maybe next turn if we draw one drop, which is most uh percentage wise common in our deck to draw so we can just do that um let's just keep working our way in with the raptor here two per turn it's gonna take friggin forever what we need is a banner a banner would be really cool unfortunately 
uh, we cannot play a banner and the cleric next turn. So it's a little weird. I think voice is so good. Uh, you know, it pulls out other spells for them to utilize the magecraft on. So this is probably a lot of chump blockers, right? They can gain the 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters and vigilance for the turn. Uh, for 3 mana, that's an option to them. You know, even the scry 2 draw card, I believe, they have access to. Yeah, the 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters and vigilance seems to be the, uh, the go-to here. And, um, you know, here's another Defiant Strike going off. So we definitely are chump blocking the heck out of these spells, right? We cannot allow this to go through. That's super lethal. They're looking for flying. They're looking for protection. Um, they're looking for some form of evasion, right? Trample will get the job done as well. Uh, a few different options for them. They, they gain protection. Nice. Good game. So protection from white makes them unblockable, and that's going to uh, lead to lethal. And uh, there's nothing we can do there. Woof. Going first. Uh, we really, really like that. Keeping this hand. Do we play slow? Probably not. Let's just keep the cleric as a creature. Yorion, turn one removal. Maybe, but let's just do as much damage as we can. Uh, this will allow us to swing for three next turn. Definitely not a bad thing. Land out. Oof. So this is actually pretty decent for us because we'll get two counters. Right? The monk goes up. Eric pushes up the usher. Hit for three. We have a total of six on board. There could be something in this deck with pack tactics. Do we have any really cheap mono white spells that utilize pack tactics? Because that is a nice play line. We do not mind that. They're playing slow. Right? Dropping two rares. Who do you think you are? <laughs> um... We don't have a successful double drop. And I really want to keep this to destroy an enchantment. I do, however, think this is relevant as the creature. Should we play this on nothing? They're not going to have non-land permanent other, like, nothing that we really need to take other than Maze Mind Tome. Should we hit for an additional damage? Or try to take Maze Mind Tome. I'm going to go additional damage. Right. I do not mind that. Should we play this as a land? Question mark. Probably. I think the non-land session has passed. Because if we pull a one drop, which is most likely... Then we can double drop next turn, right? Got him. Nice. Alrighty, opponent goes first. The hand is... Not great, but it's there. I'm having bad luck today. Uh, pulling the perfect hands. Right? Let's just throw... Protection out, probably. Little bit of protection, please. Now we can kind of lay in with our other creatures. Are we playing against big boy rogues? That's the question. You jerk. Playing our poochkies. But that's alright, we've got to back up. We have a backup. That's just fine. Maybe we should have attacked from one first. That's probably a little bit of a mishap there. I'm just like you guys, right? We all misplay. Are they oopsing me? Or they've made a mistake as well. <laughs> um. Yeah. Raptor out. Code spell cleric pushes up the usher. 
please. Thank you. And uh, are there rogues in this deck? I don't know. It could be a control deck, but it could also have rogues, and I don't want to just attack into a rogue, right? Go for it, HGG. Don't be a chicken. Go for it. Well, uh, the cycle for zero is actually okay. I was most worried about a Thought Thief, and then the Thought Thief blocks the Selfless Savior, and then next turn, when it starts right here, they would have removal on the Usher, and that would have made the Ultra Sag. But now we know it's kind of a control deck, right? We know this. Let's just swing in, see how it goes. All right. Flawlessly. Let's make a 1-1. One, one. And, uh, yeah. That's gonna be it. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 damage next turn. Not enough. I'm freaking land. They're oopsing me again. Or themselves. It's hard to tell. Maybe themselves, because we're laying in with a beat down here. And our turn. Lethal next turn for sure, which is really cool. Uh, they could also wipe us here. Yeah. But fortunately for us, we have both odds and evens. They need to take evens here. Um, no, they take odds. They leave us with evens. Actually, I guess odds was the better choice there. Um, our turn. They're totally tapped. Banner, finally. Where have you been? Every game, I want to be playing you on turn three. So I do not appreciate you doing that to us and uh, you get a nice chunk of damage in there so you know those are the kind of matches we want to be playing we're going to do one more and then we'll finally wrap up going first i don't think it's the worst we can keep this right it'll be all right and um you know monk gets a double cast on top of it really just looking for that third land looking for the banner on turn three and that's gonna make just our lives so much easier I'm risking it for the biscuit. Sure, they might have turn one removal, but I love... Oh, they don't. Well, they still could as soon as we... Let's attack first. Go to damage. Yeah, sure. Monk in next. Followed up by the selfless savior. Hopefully next turn uh, they play... Oh, I don't know. The most annoying card ever. <laughs> Robber of the Rich. It's so terrible to play against. They don't. So we go Battlefield Raptor. Very Guide Mother. Pushes up Monk of the Open Hand. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. What a card. It's, it's quite amazing. So they're at three. And we have so many targets that that's a good game. And we just overwhelm people, right? We just go wide with the creatures. Uh, you know, typically we want to get that banner out. But we... <laughs> It's a struggle day. Uh, the decks are working, just not the way I want them to. So let's break it down and wrap up. Alrighty, so that is the free-to-play version. Obviously, we were just in the play queue where pilot's very nice. There's a lot of beginners in the play queue as well, but that's okay. Um, you know, we all have to learn the game some way, and the play queue is definitely the friendliest place to do that. So if you're new to the game, check this deck out, get your daily wins done in the play queue, just like I was doing today, and you're gonna have a lot of success. Uh, I really like this deck, it pilots very well, and it's actually something that I would take into Mythic with no problem. Let's now take a look at some of the upgrades that I think are great to make, if you love it that much. Of course, uh, recommending cards you may already have, and definitely cards that you should have, the Faceless Haven, right? If we, put Snowlands in the deck, we can now use the Faceless Haven. If we get wiped, we still have the Haven to attack, right? That is absolutely amazing. Luris is good because, you know, we can bring things back from the grave and they're all very cheap. So very high synergy there. Maul of the Skyclaves. I love to put this on the Cold Spell Cleric, mm, right? The Cold Spell Cleric uh, potentially pushes itself up and then you put the Maul on it. Now you've got, uh, you know, 3-3, three, three, a 4-4 four, four with Vigilance which is really, really quite friendly. Luminarch Aspirant, well, it can help that Code Spell Cleric go up, up, up even further. 
uh, or anything. And of course, the Paladin class for one. Very good for the second spell synergy of the deck. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Oh my gosh, that's very, very good. And then potentially giving, uh, you know, things uh, or something double strike, uh, which is good as well. So Paladin class is a good addition for the deck as well. If you're looking to upgrade it with new cards and maybe you got Paladin class in your packs that you opened uh, just today or something. So that could be uh, an interesting signal from the universe that you should play this free to play deck. <laughs> I don't really know though. So uh, again, as far as editing cards out, definitely don't drop the banner. Don't drop the spirit. Don't drop the code spell cleric. Don't drop the monk. Don't drop the hole. Don't drop the Dawnbringer. Uh, Wing of the Cosmos. There you go. You can take that out if you want. Uh, that's a good place to start, depending on how many of these cards have you uh, as well. Maybe the Skyclave Cleric. I always love to trim land, personally. Uh, that's another option. And, you know, just not any of the second spell cards. And again, I like the Guide Mother as well, just because of the value of two cards in one there. So um, I'll let you guys make that decision because everybody has different cards. You're all adding different amounts. So it is a skill you're going to have to get used to eventually. Of course, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Myself and the community will do our best to help you be as detailed as you can so we know what we're helping with. With that being said, make sure to like the video. It helps a bunch. Subscribe to the channel because at 35,000 subs, we'll be giving a complete rare playset away to someone, which is cool. Jump into the link tree link to support the channel. Get into the community. Uh, all of the events are happening and stuff within that. So check out the link tree link description below, or you can give it a Google really easily. And a massive shout out to uh, today's sponsor, Into the AM. Uh, I'm supposed to be wearing a, a tee. They're trying to sell new uh, cutoffs. Uh, tank tops or whatever you want to call them uh check out that link that's in the link tree link um you know they just sent me a whole bunch of new swag so i definitely do want to give a big shout out to them thank you guys so much i know i'm wearing the hoodie uh this is still all their clothing though uh, it's just so cold in the basement right so uh i do wear them uh when it's nice and hot and i go adventuring but unfortunately in the basement it's just the hoodie so check them out in the link tree link and uh you know more importantly than everything you guys have a magical day and we'll see you soon in the next